Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. We're back with our vanilla-only series. We're going to be taking the Skaven today up against the Lizardmen. And uh, Skaven are one of those factions that a lot of people would say are very reliant on their DLC. I, however, thoroughly disagree. I think Skaven are one of the strongest, and always have been, one of the strongest factions. And uh, even without their DLC, I mean, they do require a certain style of play, I think. But uh, let's go ahead and have a look at what I brought here. Uh, Queek was a beneficiary of some successive buffs over the last few patches and is actually in a pretty good spot for Footlords right now. He's got uh, full kit, Dwarf Gouger, Trophy Head, Standard Ground, Verminous Valor, and the Warp Shard Armor. We've got an Assassin to help back him up. Uh, unit of Death Runners here for that sweet Weeping Blade. Death Runners again recently got a little bit of a rework. Less models now, a little bit uh, less expensive, but... Still, we've got uh, Rat Ogres, a couple of Storm Vermin, Sword and Shield, we've got a Plague Priest up on a bell, a Doom Wheel, just a, a Skaven army, sl Skaven slaves. It's, uh, yeah, it's a Skaven army as to what you would expect. For Turin here, he's got the Pawhawk Sentinels, a uh, mix of Skin Cohort with Javs here, we've got some Croxagors, uh, gonna be led by Gorok, and, uh, yeah. Right off the bat, going to be getting this melee engagement underway. You can see the Paddle Boys paddling in here. The Saurus also going to be absolutely just decimating these guys. But the Rat Ogres also directly charge in on the Skink Javelins, preventing them mostly from using their Javelins. Same, same thing with these Skaven Slaves here. We're going to run in and start uh, draining and... Uh Looks like a Manticore summon from the Lizardmen, but Gorok all of a sudden finds himself in trouble. He gets matched up on Queek and the Assassin here. He's getting debuffed, and uh, yeah, not... Not too good of a situation for Gorok to be in. He's going to call out a Manticore, though, <laughs> to help help against the battle with Queek. And, uh, yeah, despite that, Gorok's still taking some good damage here. He's got all of his own stuff popped, but still, melee stats are down to zero. The Manticore, or sorry, the Doomwheel also charges in to help with the Manticore, just kind of keep things tied down. There's not a lot of great targets for the Pahawk Sentinels, but over here, this, this flank turn's going to be winning out. That's totally... Totally fine with me. You can see Gorok's just been absolutely getting wrecked here. Rival Hide Talisman, the trophy heads, just all of the debuffs overlapping there to really ruin his day. Meanwhile, over here, I mean, my uh, Clan Rat Spears got routed off, but at the same time, these Death Runners, although they're anti infantry, being mixed in here just for the Weeping Blade mostly, you can see those Croc scores down to only 50 armor, so even the Storm Vermin with swords and shields are going to be able to do consistent damage against them. Meanwhile, here, these Rat Ogres getting terrified away, unfortunately, but uh, they will be coming back don't worry and uh, here we're still getting a pitched hero fight the Soros Scarvet tries to come in but this hero squad of Queek and the Assassin is just so scary they're gonna absolutely wreck him um, just completely tooth and nail tear him apart here yeah you can see he's gone uh, the, the Doom Wheel's also taking quite a bit of damage but ain't been able to come in just get consistent rear charges kind of been ping-ponging around terrifying away different units here Plague Priest gonna pull up a summon as well Gorok's coming back around or no actually another Manscore summon uh, from the Lore of Beasts skink there. Very good stuff. Meanwhile, in the back line, you can see my Storm Vermin are still holding up against some Saurus and the Croc scores here. Very good defensive units. And again, these uh, Death Runners getting in here, that Weeping Blade applying to those Croc scores, applying to these Croc scores. They're down to only 27 between the Weeping Blade and Queek's Warp Shard armor, also providing that AoE armor debuff. So, although the Lizardmen units normally would have very heavy armor here, obviously, with those overlapping debuffs, even like the non-armor-piercing damage of the Assassin or the Storm Vermin will be able to do enough damage to really tear through these units here. So uh, we'll just kind of keep it in relatively cinematic mode as uh, Gorok is continuing to fight here. He's got Standard Ground active, a pretty nice uh, friendly fire there on some of these Death Runners who are currently duking it out with Chameleon Skinks, trying to finish them off. The Manticore Summon, still online for the time being, comes in, actually gets some pretty good damage on Queek and the Assassin here, you can see they're they're squishy enough that, I mean, Gorok's not a pushover, don't get me wrong, he is punching back at this point pretty hard, and I think he actually routes Queek off here, um, but thankfully for me, these Death Runners are going to come in, uh, they've got their anti-infantry AP, and Gorok, again, gets dropped down to only 27 armor between those overlapping debuffs, I mean, granted, Queek's going to be gone soon anyway. These little Assassin Rat Boys, led by the, uh, the actual Assassin here, going to get in, and finish Gorok off, I believe. Does he actually get finished off? We'll see. Might just get routed off, but at the very least, he is done for. Oh, yeah, he's routed. And, nope, not quite. Manticore summon degenerates there for the final time. We've also got a few more Storm Vermin here. That Plague Priest relatively healthy, so very commanding position on the balance of power at this point. Terrandon Riders 
And the Pawhawk Sentinels haven't, again, haven't really had many great targets to go after. The Pawhawk Sentinels are going to be chasing Kwikoff at this point, which is definitely a great play. Turin doing everything he can to try and get back in. He does have these relatively healthy Croc Scores and Soros Warriors here, currently beating down my Rat Ogres unceremoniously. But uh, likewise, I've still got the Doom Wheel relatively healthy. I can kind of come in and start to terrify away some of these units in the periphery. The Death Runners and the, this uh, Plague Priest also very, very healthy here. So not looking great for the Lizardmen. They are still technically in the fight. I don't think Gorok has been finished off. No, he did get finished off by the Assassin somewhere. Um, but yeah, the Skink Priest still alive here. And yeah, might be fast forwarding a little bit through this late game, potentially, as we kind of clean up some various units here. You can see I popped the concealment bombs, and I'm like, okay, what's still here? Everything here shattered. Oh yeah, it's just this little kind of blob of Saurus and Croc scores. Fighting uh, as best they can here against this blob of Skaven troops. I mean, I've got Skaven slaves, clan rat spears, all sorts of uh, nasties in here. The Pterodons trying to come over to provide some support. But uh, don't think it's going to be enough. You can see Cold-Blooded being cast there on those Soros Warriors to try and hold their leadership. But seeing the approaching uh, <laughs> Skaven, Skaven Death Squad there, they are going to rout. And so Queek getting some good work done despite the fact that he got uh, wrecked himself and routed off. I mean, he was able to get in here, get enough damage in on Gorok. And the other thing too about Queek is they changed him to have, I believe, more splash attacks. So he works a little bit better at just, like, saturating in those infantry fights, getting big attacks to, like, kill a bunch of infantry. Didn't actually get a bunch of numbers here, mostly because he was focused on Gorok primarily. But uh, even still, just uh, no XP chevrons really for any of my units, just even kills all across the board here. 50 for the Doom Wheel, 79 here, 65, 56 uh, for the Death Runners, 67 and 12 for the two Storm Vermin. One of the Storm Vermin kind of got wrecked on a little bit there, but... The utility of the Death Runners, and I mean, Triads are great units, don't get me wrong, and uh, objectively, they would have been better in this situation, other than for killing Gorok. I mean, in that late game situation, that was quite nice, but like, obviously, against the Croc scores, Dinos, and stuff, the Triads are going to be better. But with the vanilla game, you still have access to Death Runners, and they still have access to Weeping Blade, right? So you still have that tool available in your arsenal. And just quickly talking a little bit more about Queek. Um, splash attacks are one thing. Um, his items have also gotten buffed now. So Dwarf Gouger, like many other weapon strength buffs, has been slightly increased. It's now 50% armor-piercing weapon damage, which is absolutely massive. Likewise, Dwarf uh, Warp Shard Armor, I don't remember exactly what this effect has been. I, I want to say it was a lot weaker previously, but now minus 5 melee defense and minus 23 armor in a constant effect is pretty strong, especially minus 23 armor as a constant. I think that might be the highest, by far the highest constant armor debuff in the game. And so overlapping that with the Weeping Blade here, you only really need, like, like I had there, one unit of Death Runners. Then suddenly you think about like your non-armor piercing units, like I said. Your Sword and Shield Storm Vermin basically will outperform the Halberds, right? Because they have better melee stats, just straight up better melee stats, more weapon strength. And uh, with the lack of armor, obviously that lack of AP won't be as much of an issue, right? Rat Ogres, super strong kind of shock. Uh, monstrous infantry unit. They're one of your few high mass units as well, so going three to four in most matchups is almost always a good idea. You've got your Doom Wheel and Hell Pit as well for your terror options. Assassins are one of the best heroes in the game, in my opinion, right now. They've got Assassin Trophy, super strong. Slippery, I mean, if you need to get away, you can. The fact that you get Concealment Bombs for free is awesome. And uh, Rival Hide Talisman, also an excellent item. Skaven Brew, super underrated as well. I didn't bring it here. I don't bring it terribly often, but that plus 40 melee attack, 30% weapon damage, and immune psychology one-time use can be situationally very strong. Obviously, the Plague Furnace is a super weapon um, in most tournament rule sets, me meaning you can only ever bring one. Uh, like the Mortis Engine, it's just a powerhouse unit, very expensive, and always going to be a priority target for your opponent. And not to mention, you have one of the best lores of magic as well, with an awesome summon. And I will point out one unique thing about this uh, this particular summon as well. Vermintide and uh, I believe Pestilent Birth and the, the Dreaded 13th are all the same. Um, you can summon these even if you have a full 20 stack, which is not true of any other summons in the game. Meaning that Skaven in multiplayer are the only faction that can go over 20 units. 
And uh, yeah, you don't even need DLC to do it. All you need is this this boy, or of course, Skrulk. Skrulk is uh, ever competitive, right, with his two very powerful items and having access to Lord of Plague himself. Um, you've still got uh, Tretch if you really want. <laughs> and uh, even the bells, like the Gracier bells here, you'll see used to good effect on uh, quite a few different occasions. Both lores, uh, both Ruin and Plague are uh, very, very good. So the Skaven, while you may think of them as like Giselle's Rattling Gunners, you know, Flares, all the DLC units, they are still exceptionally powerful uh, playing in more of a traditional kind of, uh, yeah, regular non-DLC build. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, share it with some friends if you found it useful. And yeah, I appreciate all your support. Thank you once again, and we'll see you next time.